Oh my God, she did it again. She did it again. Wait till you see what I'm about to share with you today. Cash Money G, Fanny, the Honorable Fanny T. Willis, Madame Fanny T., has engaged in another ex parte communication copying the judge of the YSL Rico case in an email she sent to DEI hire has no business, zero business, being anywhere near a court of law. Miss Adrian Love, this is the longest case in Fulton County history. It is just remarkable. I've said it so many times. They've gone through three different judges. This is like trying to unscramble scrambled eggs. It cannot happen, won't happen. So the reason you haven't seen a ton of coverage from me in this video, you know, we've been covering a lot of the Trump Rico case that was launched by Fannie is because it's just been a complete disaster. It's just, it, never mind all the other stuff that's been going on. But today, what I'm going to share with you has to be shared. You have to watch this. You have to check this out. It's absolutely insane. I can't believe this judge hasn't ruled this a mistrial. I had such high hopes for Judge Whitaker. She was the third judge, remember, in the longest Fulton County case in the history of Georgia. And she had so much ample time. This guy's obviously innocent. These poor defendants, young thug and company. I mean, it's just absurd. And wait till you see the letter that launched it all. The email that was sent to Miss Love from a viewer, a random viewer in Germany, puts it so succinctly, puts it so perfectly and adequately. I can't wait to share you that. But first... I have to share you this, which to me is really kind of a metaphor for the entire absolute failure and lack of organization, lack of skill, lack of accountability and responsibility from Fanny's DA office. Check out this first clip that I'm going to share with you where Miss Hilton exaggerates in such a dramatic, egregious manner the amount of bullets in this specific type of evidence watch this this is a real quick clip and then we're going to get into the other stuff watch this and all of these shootings are in response to what happens in february with wife and lucci getting stabbed is it riddled with bullets when you say excuse me maybe i shouldn't say riddled with bullets but there are bullet holes in her vehicle how many uh, i believe there's one to her vehicle your okay uh, y'all can y'all can no your Honor. just no we have got to figure out some things that we can do without in this case. And this is one of them. So if you, if you couldn't hear that, it went from essentially such an over exaggerate. Again, I think this is a metaphor for the entire DA's case, which is based and predicated on absolutely nothing. It is a disorganized hot mess. It's an insult to our criminal justice system. It's an insult to everybody in that courtroom, everybody watching, everybody in America, everybody in the state of Georgia, and every single Fulton County resident, specifically the poor people of Fulton County. This is who represents them. This is who's supposed to be looking out for them. This is what Fannie Willis always calls the people that I work for. It is so embarrassing and sad. Just listen to it one more time and listen to how mad the judge gets. Shootings are in response to what happens in February with Wyeth and Lucci getting stabbed. Is it riddled with bullets? You hear Judge Whitaker go, is it riddled with bullets? Riddled. It went from riddled to bullets to listen to what Hilton says finally after being caught lying, caught, I mean, red-handed, being a complete, utter train wreck. She goes, no, it's just one, actually. When you say, excuse me, maybe I shouldn't say riddled with bullets, but there are bullet holes in her vehicle. How many? Uh, I believe one. there's one to her vehicle. Y'all okay. uh, <laughs> can, y'all can, no. Just, no. We have got to figure out some things that we can do without in this case. And this is one of them. An analogy for the entire case, especially the DA's office, especially Fannie Willis's office, it just to me represents the entire reason why this case is a gigantic waste of time, energy, money, funding, resources, the whole gamut. Okay, this clip right here, uh, you're going to see um, defense lawyer, attorney Douglas Weinstein, who represents one of the defendants in the case, I believe it's Yak Gotti. And uh, he's addressing the concern of the ex parte communication that the Honorable Madame 
Fanny T. Willis engaged in by copying the judge and talking about the RICO statute. And again, you can really sense the frustration. It gets heated for a second because the DA's office, Miss Hilton and specifically and Miss Love, they essentially minimize. They minimize just like they minimize everything because they don't know anything about the law. They know nothing about due process. They know nothing about what's what d uh, kind of credibility, integrity the bar should uphold and what the criminal justice itself is foundation on because they don't know anything. And you can really sense the fed upness in the judge's voice. Watch this. Bring to us the ex parte communications you received from Madam DA Fonnie Willis. Mm -hmm. um, given the sensitivity and the history in this case of ex parte meetings or maybe communications, would you just please request the state? I, I understand probably what was behind that communications. Um, and of course, it is great for a a boss to buck up an underling who has perhaps been attacked or maligned. But I don't believe that, and I, and I don't think the court does either, that the court should have been copied on that communications, especially one that reads maybe more like a, a campaign ad with a sir story in it than... Very good point. Very good point. Because... There is some speculation, I tend to be in that camp as well, that this was all done intentionally on purpose by Cash Money G. Willis uh, in a way to kind of, uh, I don't know, almost bolster her uh, veneer, her stature, her campaign. But I, honestly, honestly, what I think, because you want to talk about riddled, this entire case has been riddled with gross negligence and gross incompetence. I just think it's just another... Uh, error, dumb error in a series and litany of dumb errors because they don't have any business, no absolute zero business being anywhere near a court of law where lives are on the line. I mean, these poor young people, their lives are on the line. They could spend the rest of their life in jail, if not worse, if this case doesn't come out in their favor. So uh, uh, I, I, I tend to think there's a possibility that it could have been intentional, but uh, there's a stronger part of me. And I'd love to get your comments. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, especially when we read the actual letter, that it's just another example of gross incompetence. It's just another example of these people having zero qualifications, zero skills, zero acumen of the law. Um, then uh, anyway, I just don't believe it was appropriate. And I would just ask you to please ask the state to halt any future communications ex parte they might want to have with this court. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, it's a shame that the court would even have to say something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, can you all please communicate to everybody in the DA's office to not have any sort of ex parte communications with the court? And y'all may not even know what I'm talking about because I don't think either of you was copied on that email, but um, Miss Love was. Hmm? Miss Miss Hilton, you were as well. I do, Your Honor, and I don't know. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. I think we have a different perception of a direct communication with the court, but we but the make court sure was that copied oh on my it. God, and it could have been an accident, but it, and Your Honor, it, it should have been careful. Instead of saying but sorry, but the state did not have the initial conversation with the court. That was no, a community that. member and. A, was very much a reply. Also, was not a direct communication with the court, but we understand the court's person. We understand what the court is saying. Oh, excuse me. I, I just need to take um, issue with the fact that it wasn't a direct communication from the court. Sorry. Excuse me. Can you hear me now? I didn't mean to act like Max Sharp. Um, I, I take issue with the, any <laughs> a little type big of suggestion that this was not a direct communication with the court. It went from Madam DA Fonnie Willis to this court. It was so, a direct communication to this court. It was inappropriate. It was praising George's RICO statutes to the court, which again was not appropriate, Your Honor. Frankly, I think it might be a good idea to print out the email and make it a court's exhibit to this record. Um, but I think what Ms. Hilton was just saying was that the original communication was not from the district attorney's office. The original communication was, I don't know who this person is or where in the world they are, um, but some 
member of the world, member of the public, emailing Miss Love directly, but copying several other people, the court included, because of course our email addresses are a matter of public record. Um, and, you know, I basically ignored it and deleted it. But um, as you all know, because I forwarded the next communication to everybody, um, the elected DA, Ms. Willis, made a decision to respond and um, made the decision. directed that response to Ms. Love, but kept everybody, including the person who had made the original email um, communication and the court. She's trying really hard to be polite and not say these dumbasses over here at the DA's office. On her response to Miss Love, and I believe that to be ex parte, and that is the reason why as soon as I read it, I had Miss Persefield forward it to all counsel because... I don't think that should be going on. Because that's the law. I that's appropriate. I appreciated that, Your Honor. And Thank the you. court really has <laughs> ignored entirely the substance of the communication because the court is not making any decisions based on whether I think the RICO statute is good or bad. That's not what judges do. The legislature enacts statutes. I apply them hopefully correctly. Here's the email from Cash Money G sending it to Miss Love after she got this original email from a viewer, which I can't wait to show you, but I just want to show you the, the response that's getting all this hoopla. So Fanny says, please ignore this foolishness. I'm going to do it in my best cash money G boys. Please ignore this foolishness. As you know, the elected district attorney, it, okay, I'll stop, is extremely proud of you and believes you to be a huge asset to this office and our community. Yeah, that's who thinks that? Who thinks that Miss Love is a great asset? Do you? Let me know in the comments down below. Give me a Y if you think she's a great asset. Give me a capital N if you think she's an abysmal failure. I'm in the capital N camp, if in case you're wondering. You have no chance of losing your job and your service is greatly appreciated. Folks who have never tried cases will always have nasty things to say. But while they criticize from the sidelines, they fear the arena. Platitudinous, trite, trivial, complete cliche. They are not risking life and limb to keep our community safe. You're, li you're risking life and limb? How come you have time? Here's my question, Cash Money G. How come you have time to write emails, but you can't show your butt in court and actually do your job? Where are you? Are you in Jamaica with uh, Nathan American Pie Wade? Where is Fannie Willis? Why is she not a part of these cases? It makes no sense. Let me tell